Hello, everyone. For our Glide conference about bringing the power of AI to 1 billion creators, please give a warm welcome to the co-founder and CEO of Glide, David Siegel. Good afternoon. How's everyone feeling? Good. Um, I'm sorry, I don't speak French, but I asked one of my colleagues just to help me translate the title of the talk uh, into French. And he told me this translates as, Merde glide c'est puissant. <laughs> so, welcome to my talk. I hope you uh, have a little bit of energy and attention span left. I know it's been a tough couple days, a lot of champagne. Um, but I'm really delighted to be here and to, to tell you about Glide and uh, what we're doing with AI and how it can make the software you build more powerful. Uh, before I get into the AI stuff, I'm just going to give a general background, a reintroduction on what is Glide. Uh, being here the past couple of days, we found a lot of people who knew Glide back from when we launched in 2019 or 2020 when Glide was mostly a tool focused on turning Google Sheets into mobile apps. Uh, but especially in the last year, Glide has transformed into one of the most powerful, not just no-code tools, um, but what you'll see today is, is one of the most powerful AI-driven software development tools uh, that we've found. So we started Glide inspired by this strange dilemma that even businesses with million-dollar budgets struggle to make good software. And this is a quote from the CEO of Stripe. One of the strange facts about the world is how hard it is for organizations to build good software. And they can reliably turn capital into a nice headquarters, a great fleet of cars, or a nice ad campaign. But for whatever reason, they can't turn capital into good software. And I spent the last 10 years of my career before Glide building tools for enterprise software developers who were building internal mobile apps. And we would regularly see companies spend a million dollars and eight or 10 engineers trying to build a custom piece of software, and the project would fail. I asked uh, ChatGPT to draw me a picture of boring enterprise software. And uh, unfortunately, this, this, this retro aesthetic is kind of cool now, so it's not, uh, it's not as ugly as I had hoped, but we've all experienced, well, I hope not all of us, but unfortunately, many of us have experienced working in a company where you're using some internal piece of software. It doesn't work on your personal phone or it's very outdated and the icons are blurry. And it just, it lowers the quality of your day at work. And you, you don't feel like you work in a great company. You feel like you work somewhere where the software is clunky and old. But we use these beautiful devices that are getting more powerful all the time. We have amazing laptops, amazing phone, amazing tablets. And the consumer software we use every day is always raising the bar on user experience and design and support for new devices. And when we started Glide, we said, why, why can't the software that we build and we use at work feel more like the great apps that we use on our phone all day long? Why is it so far behind? So we, we, start, we started Glide to solve this problem. We want the custom software that we build inside of businesses to be fast, intuitive, up-to-date, modern, fresh, exciting, sexy. So that's, that's the first reintroduction to Glide that I wanted to explain is that Glide is meant to help people build custom business software that's easy to build and users will love. That means that Glide is not intended for the entrepreneur proving a new idea for a massive new social network. We have a clarity at Glide at who we're trying to build for and it's businesses building software to be used by their employees, their partners, and yes, their customers, but it's building software that supports an existing business, not software that has a shot if it becomes successful at being a new business in a public facing way. It's a subtle distinction, but I felt important, it's important to say this because no code is so broad, it serves so many purposes, but we view Glide as a tool for building custom powerful business software that users love. So how does the product work? I promise I'm going to get to the AI part, if that's what you're here for. I'm just telling you a little bit about Glide. Um, I hope it doesn't feel like an advertisement, but I just wanted you to understand the context. So Glide, the product is broken into three parts. 
the first part is uh, synced data tables that connect to your Airtable, Excel, Google Sheets, MySQL database. And they let you add powerful no code computations as calculated columns. Perhaps the most well known part of Glide is uh, the self designing layouts that adapt to every device and always look fresh. We're very we're specific about uh, supporting mobile devices at Glide. That is one of the more underserved surface areas of business software. Usually mobile is left out, but mobile is very important to businesses because their employees usually have mobile devices they're bringing to work. And finally, if you haven't, if you haven't been paying attention to Glide for the last year, you may have missed our new workflow editor, uh, which introduces actions that update your data and connect your app to other tools. So you can send messages on Slack and Microsoft Teams create new contacts in HubSpot, send emails, and update data in external services. These are some examples of our customers. Uh, so HomeShield is a company based in Scotland, uh, and they do home renovations, and they have five apps in production managing their entire process, from clients registering their projects, to assigning those projects to salespeople, checklists following through the sales process, and then finally, apps use on-site to coordinate the home improvement process. The Centerline, which I'll tell you a little bit more in a moment, they build tools for uh, investors to track their uh, investments into companies and see summaries of performance. And then finally, Man Manbo, uh, maybe you're familiar with them. They were founded in Paris in 1844. They manage five luxury shoe brands, and they also have uh, five Glide apps helping them manage over 50 stores and all of their inventory and their internal employee communications. So in each case, what we're trying to do with Glide is get custom software inside of companies that sets a high bar for user experience and power and support for mobile devices and laptops and tablets, but is ultimately used to make the business more effective. How else may get close to it? I'll start the video over. So this is, this is just an example customer. He's, uh, he works in IT at a company that does QA on appliances. And I just wanted you to hear from a Glide customer how they view it and the kind of process that the software replaced. Well, my name is Rafi Kassa. Um, I work for Champion Industries. We make commercial dishwashers here in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And um, we make and sell commercial dishwashers. So if you go to a restaurant, you are in a hospital, if you're at the airport, you got to be able to count on having clean wares, clean dishes, clean plates, glasses, whatever you need. We are behind the scenes there. I got into uh, the engineering department and the first things my boss says was just like, hey, we've got these test sheets and um, they're all on paper. Is there a way you can just kind of digitize them? Like maybe scan them? And I was just like, you know, what if I like kick it up one step? So I started doing some research and the only one that stuck was Glide. It does everything I need to do and it's easy to understand. Before our Glide app, we were using pen and a paper test sheet. And you would go through and check this test sheet like you were sitting at the doctor's office. And then after all that was done, it got stowed away in the manila folder. And the only time it was ever looked at was when something went wrong. So we have a specified like quality team um, that goes through and after the machine's built, the machine gets to that little person and that person has to go through and make sure that everything on that machine is perfect. So the Glide app really helps with making sure that the process is concrete as to what we're looking at. And also on the back end, we can do vendor analysis um, with the information that we store in Google Sheets. So if we start seeing failure points, we can identify that and go fix that problem immediately. So Glide's been really instrumental in us getting the initial data for us to go and process and make decisions. Kind of bridging the gap between engineering and production and production and service and just kind of creating that triangle of communication so that we can get ahead of stuff instead of being reactionary, we can be proactive. So that's the kind of customer story that gets us the most excited at Glide. As someone who's non-technical, by themselves usually, with not much of a budget to speak of, transforms a process in their company from 
pen and paper or many spreadsheets to this thing that is in the hands of employees and they're, they're in the warehouse and they're taking pictures and they're coordinating and they're communicating that data throughout the company in an efficient way. Um, so I'm just trying to make this point over and over again. Uh, in no code you have a huge horizontal opportunity. And a lot of people are very excited by the potential for entrepreneurs to express bold new ideas and launch new companies. But at Glide, we're interested in the sort of unsexy use cases of making sure the dishwashers work. Um, and I hope that you're either already thinking about opportunities like this or you can get excited about them too. Because that's where most of the software in the world makes a difference. It's in the productivity of companies like Champion Industries. Um, and another misconception I wanted to uh, sort of update people on is Glide is not just for mobile. Although we love showing these cool 3D devices in the customer video, uh, every Glide app is adaptive, which means it adapts its layout and its navigation patterns and many other aspects of its interface to whatever device that you opened it on. So if you add it to the home screen on your phone, it looks like a mobile application. But if you open it in a browser, on a PC, in an office, it looks like this. And uh, our common use cases are portals, admin dashboards, uh, managing information within a company in the, in the way that you heard from our customer. So last year, I talked about just the general concept of apps for work and our focus on design. I, I spoke at the conference last year on those themes. Um, but 2023 was our year of power. We thought that we'd made Glide pretty easy to use, but we really wanted to make it a more powerful platform. And our approach to AI was informed by that, uh, that attitude towards about making Glide more powerful this year. So in the past year, we introduced our adaptive design system. So you make a single app. You don't have to choose whether it's for mobile or for desktop, and it will adapt in the way I described. Uh, we've launched million row production data sources and a trigger finger to go through slides too quickly. Um, next week, we're launching uh, many different uh, SQL connectors into beta. When we started with our sort of spreadsheet uh, origin of Glide, it was limited to about 25,000 rows of data. Now we have big tables which can scale to millions of rows and we'll start connecting to SQL databases uh, next week. I hope you'll try the beta. And we've added a top level workflow editor for putting lo logic based and branching sequences of actions to customize the behavior of the software. So this brings me to the, the topic of uh, conversation for the conference, AI. Um, who here has a clear picture in their mind about a no-code tool that they could go home today and build an AI-powered application with? It looks like maybe 4% of the audience. Okay, so the theme of the conference was AI. Um, I hope by the end of this talk that everyone could raise their hand and I could leave you with at least an idea of how you could go forward and build something like that with Glide. So when AI really started to heat up with the launch of ChatGPT, we'd been doing some prototyping, but we said, okay, there's a mania happening right now. We have to do something with AI. What are we going to build? And we saw two options. Make building easier with Glide using AI or make the apps more powerful. We will do both, but we're a small company and we have to prioritize. And one of the things, here's one of the prototypes. Uh, I built this little magic cursor that you tell it what you want to do, and then it flies around Glide clicking for you and building your app. It's kind of exciting. Uh, and then we built some simple prompts inside the data editor just to, to generate text. But. Our, our theme this year was power, so we, we decided to make apps more, power, more powerful with AI. So Glide AI is not about image generation or generating marketing copy. Uh, and it's also not about generating layouts. It's not meant to make building with Glide easier. It's meant to put uh, interesting new AI capabilities into your software. And when we talk to our customers who are adopting AI or thinking about it, we see the spectrum of sophistication. Most companies are at this, at this point today where they are saying, okay, you can expense a $20 per month chat GPT pro subscription, go use it. Go ask it to help you with work. But we're trying to figure out, you know, what is the more sophisticated approach here? How do we get AI into the processes of doing quality assurance on refrigerators? 
or running our retail shoe company. What, what does that mean? We don't know. This is a, a new capability, and we're all discovering together how to apply it, but I, I hope I can give you some compelling examples. So the way you discover uh, Glide AI in the product is it's in our data editor, and it's a new set of columns that refer to the other data in your application, and they do AI calculations. They're small, subtle, simple-sounding building blocks that you combine in a unique way, which add intelligent capabilities to the software. And you can think of them like an AI is very rapidly editing your spreadsheet for you, according to your instructions. So what, is, what does this mean specifically? So you might have a form collecting customer feedback. And you add an AI column that says, just summarize the feedback for me so I can read it quickly. You might perform sentiment analysis and say, say classify the customer feedback as positive, negative, or neutral, so I can prioritize our angry customers. You could ask the AI to categorize things so you know which team should respond to which issues. And you could even ask the AI to uh, assign somebody who's most capable of, of responding to a particular customer issue. Hi, I keep getting text messages from the CFO. I'll show uh, a, a demo in a couple of minutes of applying these features to an IT ticketing app where people are filing issues about problems with technology within a company, and you'll see uh, the power of Glide AI applied to that scenario. Oh, late at night, asking me for banking information like our routing numbers. I normally don't get texts from this person. What should I do? Should I respond? But you can see on the left, this is the ticket I've submitted as an employee. And you can see that a title has been created, concerned about late night text requests. And this has been categorized as a cybersecurity issue and assigned to someone in the company. And on the right-hand side, we're back in our internal app, and this is what the IT team is looking at. So we get a summary created by the AI. It's categorized the issue as cybersecurity, so we could elevate that more quickly. And it's even assigned to John Smith. If we look at our team members, we see that John is in cybersecurity. And I can say, hold on, please do not answer those texts. This is a phishing attack. So someone in private company posts a comment, and this is not an AI feature, it's just a general feature of Glide commenting. And that comment is going to synchronize over to the, the app that our employees are using. That employee can just respond that they, they, got, they got the information. I'll do one more so we can see this in action one more time. I'm having trouble logging into our internal employee app. I keep getting a message about an SSO error. Can someone please help me? So in this case, this is a general issue and it's been categorized as IT help desk. And it's been assigned to Ali. And we can see over in the internal side as well, it's been summarized, categorized, and assigned. If we look at our team members, here's Ali, who is responsible for IT help desk issues. So what's happening is we are just taking a very brief bit of input from the user, a small description, and that's getting summarized, titled, categorized, and assigned to a department, and then ultimately assigned to an individual person to take care of. And then we can filter on this data. So we only want to see cybersecurity related tickets. Uh, we're going to just bubble up more quickly to people inside the company looking for these issues, uh, things that have been categorized in this way. So let me show you pretty quickly uh, inside of Glide how this works. So this is, uh, this is the internal uh, app that we've been building inside the company. And this is the view in the data. So what's happening here is we just have a plain text column that's storing information. And these, you see these columns with pink, we call this color brain because it represents the, the intelligence of the AI. These brain colored icons, we're generating a title based on the user description. So this is using one of the AI columns generate text. It has these instructions generate six word title for the support ticket, use title case. And for input, we give it the user description. And then similarly, this is one of my favorite AI columns. It's called text to choice. In this case, we're asking the AI to choose one of a fixed set of options. In this case, it's the categories or the departments in our company. And the instructions are, based on the submitted IT ticket, pick the relevant department to assign it to. If you don't know, assign it to help desk. And then we give it the, the, the description. This is a property management solution. And part of their process involves tenants reporting issues to do with their property that they're renting. And part of that involves an element of triage where a dedicated member of staff from this company goes through and assigns 
categories and prioritizes issues that tenants report. And what we have done is replaced that process using Blyde AI. So what I'm going to do is go into the tenant app and I'm going to report a couple of issues. So I'm going to go and introduce a new issue here. And let's say there's a bathroom leak. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And now we can see if there's one live issue here. This is a two app solution. So jumping into the admin app now, what we can see is there's an issue that's appeared. And when we click on this issue, we can see that the category has been set to plumbing and there's no prioritization on this one. There's no sense of urgency. Going back now into the tenant app, I'm just going to submit a, a second one. So we're going to submit another issue here. And let's say gas smell. Okay, so we've got two live issues now for this tenant. So going back into the admin app again, we can now see, ah, oh, there's another one, gas smell. So clicking through to see more info, I can see that this has been categorized as a safety issue, and it's been prioritized because, of course, the smell of gas can sometimes be quite, quite dangerous. You'll notice there was no use of any choice components or anything like that for the tenant to actually select a category. And what we're doing is using Glide AI to auto-categorize and auto-prioritize the issues that the tenant is submitting. The first thing to show you is the action. We took the approach of actually applying... Hi, I keep getting text mainly the use of Glide AI. Okay. Those videos were going very fast, and the features were really subtle. I hope you could catch them. Uh, but I'll explain what was happening. So in both cases, uh, Glide AI columns were added to a data set and they were asked to make judgments and decisions based on the data being reported by employees or tenants. And in the case of the second app, uh, just based on the information typed by the, um, by the tenant, uh, Glide AI was asked to categorize the issue as a priority if the tenant seemed distressed or in danger. And the AI is just very good at having a general understanding of language and applying that rule to categorize when some information seems distressed or indicating a dangerous situation. And it makes that decision and then the user interface based on that decision can show a red icon or prioritize that issue first in a list. And uh, it, was, it was great to hear this story from uh, our agency, V88, who built that app for their client, uh, when they added the AI categorization features, they got a, a frantic call from the customer saying, uh, do the tenants have access to the app? They're, they're categorizing their own requests. And it turned out they had to explain, well, no, we, we put an automated system in place that's automatically categorizing them. So in both cases, it's, it's a small shift in perspective to think about how AI can make your software more powerful. It's not there to just be a conversational agent that you have an unstructured text chat with. And it's not just generating images. And it's not helping you write a blog post. It's making decisions based on a specific set of outcomes that you've asked it to choose among and instructions for how to make the choice. And just using that simple idea in Glide, it's called text to choice. You can build remarkably powerful software uh, that just helps companies move really quickly. Of course, as we all know, I'll just say it anyway, as a precaution, it makes mistakes. So in general, you want to build software, at least at this stage, where the people using the application have a, a chance to correct or audit these decisions. It still could, someone could say, I have a problem with my apartment that's, that is actually very urgent, but the system doesn't classify it as a priority. That's something to be cognizant of when you're building your own AI-powered software. Is make sure there's enough feedback for the people who are ultimately making the decision to understand the AI suggestion and to annotate it or reject it if they think it's incorrect. I mentioned earlier uh, Centerline. Uh, this is a, a customer building tools for investment offices. So tools for investors to manage their own portfolios. And uh, this is what we are trying to accomplish with Glide AI, is to give people a starting point for putting custom AI functionality into their own no-code apps. And uh, so they, they were curious about what they were gonna do with AI, and they, he figured out how to put it uh, and apply it to their own problems. And he says, Glide provides a familiar interface so we can use AI every day. Um, so just to summarize the stack here and our approach, um, well, first I'll go to this slide. We, like the rest of Glide, we're trying to provide a high piece of technology that manages the complexity for you. So we consider Glide AI to be managed AI. 
what are some of the aspects of this? One is caching. So the completions coming out of the AI models are cached relative to their inputs. So as long as you're asking the AI the same question, you only pay the first time for the answer. And it's cached for, for performance and cost management uh, for the rest of the time. No matter how many people are using your app. So for example, if there were 100 managers in this uh, property management example, the first manager to view an issue and have the AI categorize it would actually cause the AI to do that work and everyone else would have the shared result. Model selection is another one. So you can think of Glide AI today as an abstraction layer over a few uh, critical model providers. Uh, today we have OpenAI handling most of the text use cases. Uh, Azure is handling uh, some of the image uh, detection, uh, extracting text and other facets from images. And we use Google Cloud as well. But all you do is you pick your high level use case, whether you're trying to extract an answer from a piece of text, describe the contents of an image. We will select the best uh, provider for the use case. And we'll even upgrade them. So Azure released a new image detection model. And we were able to update that in the Glide AI backend. So you just build on top of Glide AI. And as these models improve, your app just gets more intelligent. And you don't have to do anything. This is similar to our approach in design. In Glide, you don't pick low-level design details like the corner radius of a button or particular colors. But as design evolves, the design system managed by Glide gets updated, and the look and feel of your app just updates on its own. And multimodal ab abstraction is a, a fancy phrase that just means if you're doing something with images, audio, text, or video, you don't have to care about which model or which provider. Glide AI will just route to the best one given your use case. So I hope for the 96% of you who weren't able to raise your hand that you don't yet have a clear idea that if you wanted to go build something using no code and AI, what you would use. I hope that you have an answer now. If you go to glideapps.com slash AI, you learn about these use cases. You'll see our documentation. We have video guides to explain how to apply it. Um, and you can just start a, a trial to have access to all of these features. And it's, it's a really exciting way to build. Um, when you're writing these instructions to the AI, it's a different type of programming. And I think it's really, you know, AI instructions, they feel like no, a no-code programming language. And where you describe what you're trying to accomplish or the meaning you're trying to elicit or the decision you're trying to make. And then you'll get feedback from the AI. You'll audit the, its results. And the first time you do this, it's going to be mostly wrong. And you'll add more nuance, more knowledge about your business to the instructions, more care in crafting the outcomes. It'll help you reflect and understand the problem space that you're even reasoning about. So when you're programming the AI, you're kind of writing a software specification, a description of the behavior. And then you iterate with the AI to make it more and more accurate. Any questions? Thank you for your time and for Glide. Um, one question, like, you said the AI is still making mistakes, which is normal, I guess. Do you have already something, or do you plan on doing something like feedbacks so that the prompts, like, uh, or the, yeah, the prompt, uh, gets better by itself with the feedbacks? Um, so yeah, this is something that you could build into the app, your, your own apps. So every place where you have the AI making some conclusions, some recommendation, you could also put a, an optional text entry for the person, the administrator using the app to correct it or to add more information. And Glide can incorporate those corrections back into the original instruction. So you can have a live feedback uh, loop in the, in the app. And you, you have the domain expertise. You know, Glide on its own cannot understand which answers are correct for your use case or for your business. 
but it's often useful to build kind of your own test suite where you can make maybe a hundred example decisions where you know the outcome, maybe answer them yourself manually, and then put the AI instructions in, and then flag where the AI's conclusion doesn't match yours and audit that list. It's a good approach for iterating the instructions uh, to start with. But yeah, we, we, we can't detect error uh, on our own. That's really something you have to use your knowledge of what you're trying to use the AI, AI to automate to create more feedback in the system. But it's, it's a pretty straightforward process of taking your first step at configuring these calculations, looking at the result and comparing it to your own expectations, and then feeding back more context and more information into the descriptions. So, you know, in the example of assigning, uh, assigning issues within a company to the person who could, is the, the relevant expert in the domain, um, you might find that issues related to marketing are not going to the marketing team. So you go into the instructions in the column that is making the assignment and you add a few paragraphs about what it means to do marketing at your company, what kind of responsibilities they have. And if you want to be really sophisticated, sometimes you can ask the AI to even produce this content. So you might say for each team in your company, you might ask the AI to list 10 responsibilities that that team would typically have in a company and then use that output to read to, to even add more context to the instructions for the column that's choosing the relevant department. I have a question. How many here, David, on the, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. How many tokens uh, do you, can you process with uh, Glide, AI, Glide AI? Because uh, you're relying on OpenAI and then they have eight, 8,016, and I think they are planning to launch uh, 32 something. Yeah. And what happens if in that cell the input is longer than 8K, will it return uh, error, or it will just process the first 8,000 yeah. 8, to, tokens? So to, today I believe we have a 4,000 token context, and if you go over it, you'll get an error message and it won't produce an output. But what we plan to do is just to anticipate how much context you need and move you to to higher, higher models that will handle more context. For example, I think Anthropic has 100,000 token context now. There's new approaches that, um, actually let me simplify this. Um, so he's asked a question. Uh, so the way you interact with these AI models is you give them a bunch of text and you ask them for more text. But the AI is limited by how much text it can consider at a time. It, it considers the sum of how much you've given it in the question and how much you're, at, you're, you're asking for in response. So you can't, for example, give an AI the entire text of Harry Potter and ask it, tell me about the, you know, summarize the plot for me. Um, there are new models that are expanding their ability to consume more content in that way, uh, in a dynamic way. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, today you just get an error message, um, but we plan to have sort of a dynamic capacity expansion and just uh, charge you more if you need to upgrade to a higher model, but also give you feedback. Because you might want to put, for example, crawl the LinkedIn page of every employee in your company, join all of those into a massive document, and then say, who is best in my company to help with this particular problem? And the AI should be able to consider the CVs of everyone in your company, and then recommend the person that they think is most relevant. Glide couldn't do that today because Assuming you have more than, if you have more than 100 people in your content, that would be hundreds of pages of text, but we, we anticipate that it will be sort of arbitrarily scalable um, in the next year. Great uh, demo yesterday and great talk today. I'm just wondering, in terms of handling the cost of using AI in, in Glide, you have yeah. the concept of updates, but let's say I have 100,000 rows in my table, and add a calculated column, yeah. would that be 100,000 updates or? Um, so one of the very, another, Glide is full of subtleties. I think that's one of the things that <laughs> makes it so exciting for me to explain it, but it also really hard, sometimes hard to understand. Glide has what's called a lazy or on-demand computation model. Glide only does the computation needed to show the user what they're looking at on the screen. So if you have 100,000 rows in a table and you add an expensive AI calculation to be done on every row, if you have 20 rows visible on your laptop screen, it's going to compute 20. 
don't continue to scroll for hours if you don't want to calculate all of them. We've had a couple of users, they were wondering, is it really going to calculate all of these and they scroll for thousands of rows? It will continue to calculate as you scroll, but Glide is very efficient, both in terms of cost and performance and network transactions and what it computes to put on screen. That's, that's the thing that the engineers at Glide are very good at reasoning about, but the, the no-code user shouldn't have to think about that kind of complexity. So Glide is very good at, at managing that for you. But you could construct, you could say, here's 100,000 records in our company, I want the AI to summarize each one, and then you might construct a calculation that says, tell me the average length of the summary for this entire table. Well, then it's going to go through the whole table, measuring the length of all the explanations. You understand, I hope. Any other questions? Hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so we've seen that with AI, for example, we can label things very well, get some summaries. I would like to know when we have, um, let's say, a database with a lot of rows, could, uh, do you think it's possible to use AI, for example, as a kind of assistant to find a very specific row that we could yeah. be looking for so it would save us a lot of time? Yeah, so uh, there are two approaches to answering that. Um, Glide doesn't support either one yet, but we will support both. Um, so the first is what's called vector search, uh, where every row in a database um, gets turned into a, a specific number that's a coordinate in basically in the 12,000 dimensional space of the AI's mind. So. I'm just gonna indulge in these technical details because we're already doing it and I, ho I hope you find it interesting. Um, so, you know, we spend our day, we have our lunch, and we sleep in three-dimensional space. Uh, but an AI, uh, a large language model, is a mathematical object uh, with tens of thousands of dimensions. The fourth dimension, a hypercube, is notoriously hard to comprehend for a human. Uh, don't try to think of tens of thousands of dimensions. It's abstract. Um, but it turns each row in your database into a specific coordinate in this space. And then you can search that space, given a query, to find the most proximate coordinate in that space. So we plan to support this. It's not, it's not available yet. Um, but that would let, given an arbitrary question, it would find the most semantically proximate piece of content in the database in a very efficient way. It can judge the distance just by a numerical comparison. There's another approach to this question, which is, uh, sort of quantitative query generation, where you ask a quantitative question about a large set of data, and then the AI writes a query in SQL, for example, and then you execute the query. So you might say, you know, what is the average spend of all 100,000 transactions in this table? Um, that's a quantitative question. So it would create a, a precise query and then execute the query in a more sort of a non-AI way to give the result. And uh, we've built prototypes for both of these. We'll probably do the semantic one first because what the semantic one lets you do is, uh, and we've seen customers doing this already, you can have a table with 250 50 page PDF documents. And then you index each paragraph on each page of each document. And then you can ask a straightforward question in like a chat. You could say, in the case of the customer example, uh, I'm servicing dishwasher model X don't understand how to open the door, there's a confusing latch, and it would say, the latch works like this, and it would explain how to open the door, and then provide a link to the relevant document. So that's something we're building today, and there's also a playground, uh, playground.glide.page. You can also find the, the playground app at this link. That has an example of you can upload any document and you can chat with it. Uh, but it's limited to single documents right now. But we, we do plan to expand it for uh, million row tables, for example.
Hello, thanks Hi. a lot. Thank you for coming. Um, I did have a question about security. How secure is our data when working with Glide AI? Uh, should we have the same concerns as when we work with OpenAI, for instance? Or do you have specific contracts with your AI providers that maybe protect us a little bit more? Yeah, so uh, in the case of OpenAI, we have an enterprise contract with them, and one of the guarantees they make in those purchase agreements is that they do no training on the data that you send to them. So that's, that's something, that's a great question. It's an important to ask uh, of all AI providers you use. Um, so far, they, the AI providers seem to be pretty good citizens, and they're not, they're not training on the sort of dynamic data coming through them, but we do have a specific agreement, enterprise agreement with OpenAI, and that's also one of, one of the important distinctions between using an AI provider directly uh, versus using Glide AI, for example, is we do have a higher scale, faster, uh, with better security uh, instance from them. And uh, you can, you know, all of the providers that Glide AI relies on are sub-processors registered along the lines of all of our other sub-processors. Uh, and you can request uh, the agreements that we have with them to, if you, if you're interested, and we have a security center as well that explains more of these details. Um, but yeah, that's another aspect of software development that is difficult for people. Code is not, might not even be the hardest. GDPR is a lot harder to understand than it is to code most business software. So the more we can help people sort of get these guarantees and understand uh, the trade-offs, the considerations, and what they can rely on, I think uh, is another important opportunity for no-code tools. I think we have time for one last question. Um, yeah, congratulations. Uh, it's been a, a year for Glide, I think, where there has been a lot of innovation. Um, but can you tell a bit more about the next year? What's on the agenda? I think we're going to do another year of making Glide more powerful. I think the, the response to that has been um, these guys, the experts, Glide experts like that. Um, so at Glide, we're just we're interested in creating compelling software development tools that make businesses more effective, but are also just broadly desirable and broadly available, even though our business, the business of Glide is focused on business software. Um, our, the vision for Glide is not to be the world's best mobile app builder. And there's so many aspects of software development, and now we're sort of exploring AI-driven development. The next major development for Glide will be workflows, automations, uh, processes that get kicked off based on timers or other external events and not just users you know, tapping on screens. I think that that will be one of the major changes. Um, as far as next step with AI, uh, sort of the vector, the semantic search opportunity is really interesting, helping people index documents uh, to create knowledge bases that are easy to reference within their own company is very interesting to us. Um, also, we are still interested in making Glide easier. That's one of the challenges. Uh, every no-code tool, every, every no tool starts with very few features, and over time it accumulates more and more as your users ask for more. But we're very, we're trying to remain vigilant about making Glide accessible. I hope if you've never tried it, that you'll try, try Glide itself and try the AI components, and I think you'll find that it's just remarkably straightforward uh, because of how we think about sort of simplifying every aspect from handling the data to doing the calculations to helping you with the design at a high level and bringing that same philosophy into working with AI. Um, but yeah, for the, I think the next year you'll see Glide become even more, more powerful. And also, uh, we'd love, we get a lot of feedback about enhancing the design even further with more design options. Um, so those, I think, uh, those are two trajectories that you could count on. Well, thanks everyone. I hope you all become AI-powered app builders, if, if that gets you excited. And uh, please email me, David at GlideApps, if you build something or if you have a question. I'd, I'd love to, to collaborate. Um, thank you. <laughs>